So see how just choosing a thought of either holding on to regret or choosing to see that experience as a lesson that I can learn from, see how making a choice in the moment either puts me in the place of victimization or empowerment. Hello and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm Dr. Taryn McCarthy and today is going to be a great day. We're talking all about regret and why I really strive to hold no regrets. It's one of the things my father taught me and I struggled with throughout my life. But here's what I've learned and what I'm so excited to share with you today is that the only place where we find ourselves in empowered decision-making, in choice, when we can make an empowered decision and a choice is in the present moment. That's it. That is where our power lives. And here is where I understand regret differently. Because in any moment, we have a choice. In any moment, miraculously, in any moment in time, we have a choice. And it it is enormously, enormously empowering, but only in the present moment. So let's dive into it today. Let's talk about why regret is so harmful and how when you recognize that you can put that aside, you suddenly find enormous strength. You know, I was speaking to a client earlier today when this struck me. She was talking about regrets of the way she practiced in her dental practice. And she was asking me about my old orthodontic practice. So for those of you who don't know, I used to have an orthodontic practice and I was a solo practitioner and I had that practice for about seven years. And there were many pitfalls. I made a lot of mistakes. I stumbled and fell and was really depressed. I really was extremely unhappy in my practice. You know, from the outside, I looked very accomplished and successful. I had everything down that I possibly could need. My patient treatment was going very well. The practice itself was financially very stable. I had a family. I had a beautiful home. But I was a wreck. I was the furthest thing from success possible. I was miserable. And I've come to a lot of realizations since then. I've done a lot of the inner work, done a lot of personal development, done a lot of soul searching. And so my practice today is in a different state and not just in a different state geographically, but in a different state emotionally, in a different state mentally. And it is just so enormously rewarding and the place I'm in in my life now is completely different. So my client was asking about what regrets I had in my previous practice. And I said to her, you know, every step in our journey is a learning. I really don't regret anything. I don't regret the mistakes because Each of those mistakes led me to greater understanding in a way I could never have learned in a classroom setting, maybe even from a mentor. I needed to live through those moments in time to understand myself better. I needed to feel those uncomfortable moments, even painful moments. You know, I remember moments in my first practice when not through the fault of the practice, but just my life situation where I was felt enormously alone when I made decisions from a place of fear. Looking back now, really not good business decisions. I can see how it all played out, but I don't regret those decisions. Each one of them had a purpose. Each one of them had a lesson for me to learn from. The only place where we can exercise choice, the freedom of choice, is in the present moment. I can't go back in time and choose differently, but I can choose differently today. And this is where I look at regret as a choice. Because even in this moment, I can choose to regret something from my past 
or I could choose to see it as an opportunity for greater learning. You know, and some people, when I say that, get this anxiety over, wait a minute, are you just negating the truth? Are you turning a blind eye to what was? Are you just saying something positive so you feel better? And part of me wants to say, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Because I know the power of choice, even when it comes to our thoughts, even when it comes to our perception of reality. When I choose something, a perspective, a thought that makes me feel really good about myself, then my emotions that follow are empowered, are creative, are intuitive, are positive and hopeful. My leadership in my business, of my family, and of myself, of my own dreams, feels more magnetic. My leadership feels inspired. And I take positive action that actually has amazing outcomes. Now let's look at the alternative. If I live in a place of regret, when I choose, let's be clear, to live in a place of regret, then I feel defeated. I feel like I have something I have to make up, something I have to apologize for, something I have to conquer. This feels heavier to me. It's not inspiring. I get this emotion around that thought process of, man, am I really capable? Look, I made that mistake. I should have known better. Now I feel slightly, I don't know, uh, not worthy. Maybe I didn't have enough training. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I start questioning my ability to make great decisions in the present moment. So see how just choosing a thought of either holding on to regret or choosing to see that experience as a lesson that I can learn from, see how making a choice in the moment either puts me in the place of victimization or empowerment. It's amazing. And all it is is a choice that lives in every single moment in our lives. This choice became so apparent to me last week. I was talking to my husband and I was having a morning that was just off. <laughs> I didn't meditate, which for me is a huge no-no. <laughs> I chose to go running. I didn't have much time. I chose to go running instead. And I had to be somewhere for my kids and we were looking at the schedule for the day and I was, could feel myself becoming a little bit overwhelmed and oh, all your mamas out there, you'll know this feeling. The first place I went to after feeling negative about myself and all the places that I was feeling lack around in terms of time and my choices and my freedom, the next place I went was beating up my husband, <laughs> which, you know, I do so easily. After I beat myself up, I turn to the person I love the most. And isn't that true for so many of us? So I started looking for Killian and I started not finding fault in what he was or was not doing. Of course, where was he? He was on the tractor. Here I was spinning around in the morning trying to get all the chickens in a row so that we could get going for the day and be on time to the event. And my husband dared to be out on the tractor enjoying pushing dirt around. So, of course, the anger and animosity and fear started welling up inside of me. Thoughts like, he thinks he can take all the time he wants. He takes no responsibility in this relationship. I'm the one that has to do all the things. I'm the one that has to make sacrifices. I didn't get to meditate this morning because we have to be somewhere by a certain time. You can imagine this rabbit hole I started spinning down and spiraling into. Well, the next thing I start demanding, I start telling him what to do because with fear, what we often do is look for control. Killian, get in here and please make Nula some breakfast. And while you're at it, make me some lunch and Nula some lunch so that we on and on and on and on. 
If you're listening to this podcast, chances are you didn't get into business to be miserable. The problem is that people feel that if their business gets busier, if they start becoming more successful, that happiness will eventually set in. But it can actually get worse. This is why I created the Business of Happiness Prosperity Coaching. In this one-on-one coaching, we look at how to redefine success on your terms and refine the joy and the passion in your dream. Visit me at thebizofhappiness.com and become the happiest business owner you know. Well, my sweet husband, who knows me so well and probably recognized what was happening in the moment, came in very sweetly stopped on his tractor and started making lunches and breakfasts for everybody. And almost predictably, you can see where this story goes. Whatever he did was not good enough in my mind. And so I was very nitpicky about the lunch that he'd made for us. Now, the interesting thing is I can look back at this interaction and I can see it for what it was. I was in a bad place. I hadn't done the work to put boundaries around my own self-care that morning. If I had given myself the time to meditate, given myself the opportunity to start in a good place, I might have had more presence of mind in the moment and I would have been kinder. I would have been more supportive, maybe not so fearful of the time for the day. I would have acted differently. So I can look at that moment and how nasty I was and really hold a lot of regret. I can see where I was wrong. I can see where I could have supported myself to choose differently. I could hold on to this regret and tell myself, Taryn, you are doing the work and you're still not getting it. You keep talking about this. You keep talking about perspective. And look, you failed on that day. You were nasty to your husband. I could hold on to that regret and I have lots of evidence for it. And maybe you listening to this podcast are in complete agreement. Yes, you were nasty and you didn't need to be. Look, whose husband jumps off their tractor and comes in and starts making lunch for them? You should be so grateful. And that's the language I could start using with myself. Or I could recognize in the moment I have a choice. I can't go back in time and change that choice that I made. I made a choice. I made a choice to speak to him that way. Now in this moment, I have the presence and the freedom of a choice. Always. I can choose to regret. I can choose to feel bad. Or I can choose to learn from it. I can even choose to apologize, which I did. That's all it mattered. That's all it took when I recognized it and I said, wow, I even have a choice in this moment. I can look back and beat myself up about that moment or I could choose in this moment to take the power and the love that I know is inside of me and choose differently. In fact, I choose now to say, Hey, Killian, I am so sorry. That was not fair. You were so great to come inside and help me with lunch. I should have been just so grateful for the lunch. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing that for me. Do you feel in that moment how by me choosing to see the lesson, instead of holding on to the regret, I empowered both of us? I gave my husband an opportunity to see me, to hear me, to receive my asking for forgiveness, to receive my truth, to receive my lesson, the truth of my lesson. And I was giving myself a choice to grow from it and not to dwell in regret. I believe so strongly in this practice because regrets really, all they are, are eroding of our self-worth and eroding of our self-belief. When we hold on to a regret from the past, when we replay stories in our mind, in our memory, and we feel negatively about something, it doesn't allow us to grow from it. We can feel the pain. We can recognize, ooh, that really hurt. I really shouldn't have said that to Killian. Hmm. Now I have a choice. I can grow from it. 
you know, I've even spoken to people who've said to me, well, sometimes you don't have a choice for a redo. And I feel that deeply. There are many conversations with my brother who, my, who has passed six years ago that I look back on and I can see how I could have chosen differently in the moment. But the truth is my power is in the present. I have no power over the past. What happened, happened. And yes, although my brother is no longer with me, I get to choose today how I see that interaction and how I grow from it. What I now see with my interactions with my brother from the past is that I was learning about me and about him. I was also learning how I wanted to treat people in the future, how I can learn from it for today. Today I get to choose how to interact people with people. And when I meet someone or when one of my family members says something that triggers me from the past, as my brother reminds me the way that my brother used to speak to me, now I can choose differently. And I'm so grateful for those memories. I'm so grateful for those interactions. I, in fact, get, not only get to choose the lesson in the moment, I get to choose to be grateful for the lesson in the moment. I can choose to regret those things. I can say to myself, Douglas isn't here anymore. I can't make right on those. Or I can choose to believe, to communicate with him now, to tell him now how I've learned differently, how I'm a new person, a different person, how I would speak to him differently, how I would share my insights differently. But holding on to the regrets only makes me hide, only makes me feel negative. I wonder as you're listening to this, what moments or conversations come up for you. I wonder if you hold on to regrets. I wonder if there's a unique regret that you just can't let go of. Sometimes we hold on to some regrets like this is my one regret, almost like it's a badge of honor, almost like that's something we earned or something that we're not willing to let go of. And I ask you why? Why? Why hold on to that regret? Is there something that you can learn from it and take power from in this moment, in this present moment? It's such an easy jargon for us in our culture to say, yeah, my one regret is, or I really regret not. And I ask you, is there a new perspective? Is there a possibility to choose differently in light of that new knowledge? Can you take that moment in time, that piece of data that made you feel negative, your actions, your words, led to a subsequent emotion of negativity? Can that just be a data point? And now you get to choose differently not just in similar interactions, but even in the way you experience and remember that event. Now I get to choose from my past and say, hmm, those moments actually taught me more than the positive moments. Those negative moments where I made decisions that in today's experience with this knowledge, I would choose very differently. I get to see the contrast of the two results, the contrast of feeling negative and the contrast of feeling empowered. So where in your life do you have a regret? Where in your life can you take a new perspective? Can you make a choice? Can you harness that power and freedom in the present moment of choice? Not just in your understanding of what happened, but in your thoughts and in your perception. I love doing this work. I love doing the work of positive empowerment. I believe in it really deeply. I believe that when we feel good, we can actually take positive action in our lives. And when we feel defeated and victimized is when we start acting with defense and fearful-based decision-making. So I reach for feeling positive. 
not because I want to deny what's happening, not because I'm turning a blind eye, not because I don't want to feel the pain. Feeling the pain and the sadness and the grief is integral to my learning. Absolutely. And then I get to choose how I come through it. And I get to choose how I learn from it. I gift this to you. So as you go through your days in the upcoming weekend, consider the power of choice in the present moment because we can't change the past. We can't bang our heads against a wall of regret, wishing that the past was different from how it actually was. But we do have the choice in the present. I see you, my friends. Remember this. When you feel good, that's when you can do good. Bye-bye.